last 20 years or so, this has been my go-to rasp. I've carved many, many guitar necks with it. And at some point I decided that it was time to push myself out of my comfort zone, out of my rut, force myself to try something new. And I am, I'm so glad that I did because what I tried was the Stumac Dragon Rasp. And even though I was skeptical, I didn't think that I really needed a new rasp. I wasn't sure that I would even uh, want to use a different one because I was so used to the other one. But this instantly became my favorite, the only one I want to use, the one I automatically reach for. And if I'm not using this and I'm using something else, it just feels weird now. It's funny how fast that happened. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about, more about the details of this, why I think it's such a good fit for me. And also, we're giving one of these away. So if you want to learn a little more about the Rasp and learn how you can enter for a chance to win one of these, keep watching. you didn't hear about it yet, I recently released a brand new online guitar making course called The Art of Guitar Neck Carving. And in that course, I use this rasp and talk about uh, why I like it. I talk about a lot of other tools and of course I walk you through all the steps that I use for carving and shaping my guitar necks. And I thought it would be really fun since the new course just came out to give away my favorite tool from that course, which is the Stumac Dragon Rasp. So I will put the link below um, where you can click over and you can enter for a chance to win. And uh, you can even get even more entries by, you know, subscribing to the YouTube channel and doing things like that. So you'll see all that. Just use the link in the description below to check that out. Okay, so I have uh, a few of the more popular types of rasp that a lot of luthiers use for doing the neck shaping. Uh, just as a point of reference, we're gonna maybe touch on some of them a little bit. We're gonna stay pretty focused on the dragon rasp because that's really the topic of this video. And um, I can make some videos in the future where I go more in depth to any one of those. So if you want me to do something like that, just let me know in the comments. Um, and also you can um, use the links in the description to head over to theartofluthery.com where I have lots of articles on tools and different files and rasps and all that kind of stuff as well. So I'll be sure to include that for you guys if you want to use it. Um, so for the dragon rasp, let's start with the really basic stuff. So the, on, on the most basic level, um, you're getting about a little over nine inches, nine to 10 inches somewhere of, you know, cutting length, which is pretty similar to this Nicholson rasp that I've used for all these years. Um, this is a Shinto uh, rasp. So really the usable cutting area is probably similar on most of these tools. This is, by the way, this is the large size dragon rasp. There's a few different sizes and I like the fine tooth, but we're going to talk about the tooth, the, the teeth in, in a minute, but right now let's cover the basics. So that covers it for the length. Um, it's about an inch and a half wide down here at the base. One of the reasons I was sort of skeptical about changing, especially to a rasp like this, because I didn't think I would like this tapered shape. I was just used to this uniform. And by the way, this one here is about an inch and an eighth wide, you know, the same all the way down. Um, but turns out that having this tapered shape um, is actually one of the really great features of this rasp. And it helps me for areas where I'm trying to level out like lumps and bumps when I'm carving the neck, I can go down to this wider side. And when I'm trying to get into a smaller area, maybe doing something up where the headstock transitions are in the heel, and I can move to a smaller size um, up in there, either on the flat side or a radius side. So that brings us to the next thing, which is um, the fact that it's flat on one side and it's radius on the other side. That is really, really important. That's a must have for any neck carving rasp, you guys probably know. This one's the same way, um, but the radius on this side is actually a tighter radius. And I find that I really prefer this wider radius on this. It's, it's like less of a severe radius here. That combined with the fact that it's actually wider at this point as well, just really makes it easy to make very graceful and subtle blending of like the heel down into the main neck shaft area and stuff like that. So really, really, really great in all those aspects. The thing that separates this rasp from any of the others though, is that the teeth are hand struck. And 
On paper, I didn't think that that was gonna make that much of a difference. I've never used a file before this one that had hand-struck teeth. Um, but apparently it creates kind of more of a randomized pattern. And, uh, you know, as compared to a machine-made tooth like this has, or like, actually I think all these other ones have. Um, and that randomized pattern, there's something about it that just, it, it reduces the tear out um, I'm still able to take, even though this is this is the fine tooth version, this isn't the um, the coarse tooth, um, and I find that I, I prefer this one because it takes off wood at a pace that matches my style. You know, that's the key. Um, I don't like to go super fast down to a final dimension. I ease my way down and make sure everything is just beautiful and perfect and I'm comfortable with it all, right? But I can still work pretty quickly with this. It's very, uh, it's just the right balance. So it's taking the wood off fast. It's reducing chipping and tear out. Chipping is a big deal for me because I do a lot of arch top guitars with really highly figured maple. And you know, you could be doing everything right and then for whatever reason, that flame, a piece wood chunk could come out if you're using a really aggressive tooth, more like this, and you're gonna have a problem and that's gonna be, it's gonna mess up all your hard work, you know? So this thing has never chipped anything, even in the most flamed woods. It just minimizes the tear out. It's worked good in flame mahogany, flame maple, regular mahogany, um, you know? So I can't say enough good things about the hand struck tooth. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal, but it really, really makes a big difference. And uh, one of the best features of this file. Now I wanna to talk to you about the handle. You might be looking at all these different files here and you're thinking, well, every one of them has a nice handle on it, except for the Dragon Rasp. What's up with that? Okay, so here's the story of what happened with the handle. So my initial thought was that I like this handle. It's real simple. Um, I did, toy with the idea of getting one of those beautiful, Luther's Mercantile has an incredible uh, wooden handle you can buy that's really beautiful. Um, Stu Mac actually has a video on how to install the Luther's Mercantile handle on this. And I was kind of intending to, to do something like that. And then I thought, well, I'll just stick with this one because it's the one that I'm used to and it's just real simple and basic. But when I went to the hardware store, um, they didn't have these anymore. And this used to be a thing that you could just get at Home Depot or Lowe's or any place like that. The only thing they had was this Nicholson, um, just kind of like a plastic removable handle that you can put on and take off. And I was like, ah, oh, I'm probably not gonna like that. It's, it's not really that good. So, but I was like, you know, I wanna get, I wanna try this thing and I don't feel like waiting and ordering something at this time. So I went ahead and got this and you just put it in there and then you just tighten the screw and it kind of like holds it, and it, it does a good job actually. It actually holds it pretty well, and it makes a pretty decent, but I think kind of big on the bulkier side type of a tool, you know, with all this together. The funniest thing happened though, as I use this, I got used to it, and it works really well for the initial removing of a lot of material, but then I was finessing some of the heel areas and the neck areas, and I realized that this bulky handle was in the way and I thought, well, hey, I can just take it off. So then I took it off and began to get really comfortable with using this file without the handle for the finesse parts of, of the shaping. And the beautiful thing about this, and I don't know if they did this on purpose or this just happened, uh, but there's about an inch and a half, I'd say, of area here at the end where there's no teeth. And it just makes this really, with the length of the tail on here, it just makes a really great place to hold this when you're wanting to get into like smaller areas and really just be able to refine things. And uh, it became, so what I thought was gonna be a problem and I was disappointed that I had to use this handle that was gonna be able to come off, uh, on and off, turned out to be really great because it's almost like I have two different versions of the file. I've got one where I can put the big heavy bulky handle on and I can just do the quick removal of like the bulk of the material. And then when it's time to like really finesse the curves and things, I can take that off and have a much finer feel to the tool. All the while the hand struck finer tooth is not tearing things out and just giving me really great control when I'm cutting. So once you find that perfect tool, in this case, the perfect rasp for neck carving, the next thing that you need is to make sure that your technique and your process and your systems 
are correct because the thing that really is gonna move the needle that's gonna make your work, of course, more enjoyable, but help you produce better results is not just the tool. It's the tool plus the right technique and the right process. When those two things come together and they, they, they and both of them kind of like harmonize with your style and your how you're comfortable working, what makes you feel creative and inspired and things like that. When you get those things sort of working together, that's when the magic happens. That's when it really becomes a joy and it becomes so much fun. And the quality of the work that you can produce just astronomically increases, you know? And, and that's beautiful. And that's why I created my course, The Art of Guitar and Neck Carving, was to provide the uh, insight into all the steps that I take to carve the necks of my guitars. And that course is currently live in the Luthier's Edge and it's included with a membership to Luthier's Edge along with all my other courses. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put the links in the description below. And I'll leave you with the trailer for that course so you can learn a little bit more. But before I show that, um, just wanted to say a quick thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and uh, hope you learned a few things and maybe got some insights into the Dragon Rasp uh, to see if maybe it's something you want to try. Don't forget to use the links below to enter for a chance to win one. And without further ado, I will leave you with the trailer for the new course and I'll see you in the next video. Early on in my guitar making career, the carving of the guitar neck was a little intimidating. I didn't feel very confident that, you know, even if I got one right, I wasn't sure that the next one I'd be able to get equally to the same level of comfort and playability and just overall elegance. Part of that reason was because I just didn't fully understand at that time all of the key elements that I really needed to be addressing and focusing on. And over the years, I've created a framework that I use uh, kind of an underlying structure that guides me through different phases. Um, I've identified those key elements that make up the design of a beautiful, effortlessly playing, super comfortable guitar neck. And I'm confident now that I can do that every single time when I make a guitar. In this course, I'm gonna be showing you that framework, the tooling, and everything else that goes into carving a beautiful guitar neck, reducing the stress, uh, having more fun, being creative, and consistently producing a guitar neck that players love to play, and then enables them to kind of forget about it actually, and move on to appreciating all of the other wonderful elements that you've built into your guitar and getting lost in creating their own beautiful music. We start with an overview of the different tools most commonly used for carving a guitar neck, which ones are my personal favorites, and I explain my approach to choosing the right tool for each phase of the guitar neck carving process. In the next section, we look deeply at the subject of designing the guitar neck. Before we can carve it, we have to have a solid foundation and understanding of what the five key elements are that make up a great playing and beautiful looking guitar neck. We explore those. I show my different safety checks and drawings that I do to help reduce the chance of errors and inspire confidence as I'm actually doing the carving. Now comes the really fun part. This is where we actually start carving and we start creating that beautiful design we just made in the last step. And this three phase system that I'm gonna be showing you is really the key that brings all this together, that helps this process to be more effective and consistent, while at the same time has a lot of safeguards built into it to help reduce the chance of mistakes being made and just makes the process so much more enjoyable and creative. I'm really excited to get to share my system with you. It's the same system I use for creating all of my guitars. And I believe it's really gonna help you become more confident, reduce stress, have more consistency, and make your next guitar neck the best one you've ever made. And the best part is, this course is included with a membership to the Luthier's Edge.